Ms. Durbin, motion to approve the minutes, is that? Yes, I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. All right, thank you. And second by <laughs> Mr. Watt. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Um, next, uh, next item on the agenda is approving the agenda. So uh, we do have one, I, one ordinance to add to the agenda tonight, and that's C under the legislation. Ordinance 2023-36. Ms. Frank? I'd like to make a motion to uh, add ordinance number 2023-36 to the agenda. A motion made by Ms. Frank, seconded by Ms. Zeger. Uh, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Watt? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Motion carried. All right. I, uh, your motion to approve the agenda, please. I'll make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Motion to approve the agenda by Ms. Seeger. Second. Second by Mr. Richard. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, thank you. All right, we did have uh, we did have one um, one citizen that would like to address council tonight. Uh, Mr. Rowan. Yes. Yeah, so want to step forward? My name is Steve Rowan. I live at 1130 State Route 61, Gallon. And I had a question. I know they've been doing, they've done quite a bit of paving in Gallon, but I was wondering if the city had any plans to do Naser Road from the hill to the railroad track because it's in real bad shape. You know, now below the hill between 309 and to the top of the hill, that's in Oak Township, but everything north of it's in Gallon. So. That's just that's the only thing I want to talk about. The paving budget isn't going to be. Um, there's not going to be a lot of local paving, okay. and uh, the good news is, out in front of your house, there'll be a big construction project. So on 61 and 309 and yeah. the East Side, Charles Street, all of those yeah. state routes. Our share of that was. was Test our memory. I, I don't know. I think it was a large portion of what we had set aside for paving will go into that urban paving project. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, the other thing I would say is we haven't picked the projects, okay. the limited projects in the paving program, and I don't know. It's it ends up getting clipped off the bottom of the list for relatively low traffic. Okay. So I'm, I'm just, that's, you say, well, I, well, it is in a lot worse shape than this road or that road. You're, you're it's probably it's absolutely old. right. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, so. Yeah. Um, it's not where Gibson's landscaping is. Oh, I know exactly where it's at, Steve. I, and I, um, 
I probably don't have the best answer for your question, but the smart idea to come up to bring it to our attention. I'm looking over at Ken, he's the chair of that committee. We haven't looked at um, <clears throat> available resources and how far we're, we're gonna go. I, so therefore we'll have a, our paving will be late in the year. It'll be in the fall. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Huh? Um, if uh, that's not happening, um, and it's in as bad a shape as he's saying, mm -hmm. somebody blows an axle or gets in an accident because of the shit, <coughs> the, 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 um, the road, um, who's liable for that? Well, if we know about it, then they, the, our insurance company would look at that, uh, more favorable from the person who had the car damage. Uh, less favorable in terms of the city. They wouldn't, they, if we're notified of something, uh, I think generally speaking, we'll go out and do some maintenance. But there's Maybe no. Yeah, what will be signed for uh, regarding me. road condition? You know? Yeah, I don't, I'm not. I'm I don't not know a, if that worked or not, probably not. I'm not a huge fan of signs because they clutter up and people who use common sense, don't need the sign, and people who don't read the signs, doesn't matter what you put up there. But yeah, I know, a Nazar's not in good shape, but that's the, the question you're asking is if we're notified of a problem, and that problem can be tied directly to damages or an accident, then there's uh, a greater likelihood that uh, damages would be paid. Can we catch it? If the holes are that I'm honestly, Missy, I haven't been out there in a while. I have been get some of them. Yeah. Okay. I think that's probably right. Patch you get it. some of them. Some of them are probably too large to patch. Yeah. It, just being honest with yeah. you, Steve. Especially if you just drive out there and take a look at it. I will. <laughs> Thank you, though. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, Moving on to legislation, we'll start with ordinance number 2023-34. Ordinance number 2023-34, ordinance authorizing the safety service director to advertise for bids and to enter into a contract with the lowest and best bidder, therefore, as provided by law for the live line treat clearing, to proceed authorizing payment, therefore, and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Mr. Urban. So... <clears throat> At this point in time, we don't have any tree trimmers employed in the line department. I, yep, I think four or five years. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Richard. Yeah, this is uh, something we've done uh, over the last four or five years uh, to facilitate uh, trimming back uh, excessive uh, branches and stuff that lay on the power lines, uh, potential uh, disruption of power and such. Um, actually, to be quite frankly, it makes more cost uh, effective uh, use of the city money to have a contractor and bid this out as opposed to, and this is nothing a slight on any of the folks that work for us, uh, for the citizens of Gallion, but it is better to have this contracted out than it would be to actually have folks that we have on staff doing it. Uh, plus, those folks can have the opportunity to uh, be uh, utilized more in more uh, better situations. If I just, I don't, I think this is a pretty much, this is the northwest quadrant. I want to get that in. So it is. The first ward, I'm looking at Kenny, he's thinking, ooh, no, it, as it turns out, we do it quadrant by quadrant, and we're moving into that northwest. It's a lot of old trees in the old part of the first ward, and that's not to say that there aren't out in Timberlane in those areas. Anyways, that's what this is for. <coughs> Probably not even known among this council is that uh, we are tritted. There were three people. One is now a lineman. I don't know, what's he make more, a third more maybe? <coughs> One of the better linemen. Uh, and the two other guys retired. So the before anybody said, you know, they laid off these people, I was like, oh man, that wasn't it at all. 
And in the years before we did that, now you, I think you could count on 80,000. It's really not 100, but it's easy to, uh, that's the right word, generalize, easy math. 100,000 per copy. We had three of them. We spent 150,000 on this service. The, the biggest issue with having a tree trimming crew, and one of the reasons we decided to utilize uh, retirement and uh, transfers, uh, it's, uh, I guess, four reasons. December, January, February, and March. <coughs> there, those, it, it was really difficult in the first few years that we were uh, in office to utilize those people uh, during those wintertime months. So this is, uh, has worked really pretty well. Uh, I don't think it's responsible for the lower number of outages, but we've had lesser outages. It, it certainly has helped. So, Anyways, for anybody who was wondering like what happened to the tree trimmers, based on that question, they, I think, I'm trying to think, don't know where one of them is, so I assume he's happily retired, and one's Nikki's neighbor and is happily retired. So, uh, and then the other guy is like one of our best people. So I think as as you look at chances to trim functions and and save money, get the same amount of work or more work done, I think the tree trimming decision turns out to save us money, and I think they're as <coughs> effective as we were before with no. Thanks to the, to the three guys that were doing it. Thank you. Now, once I start, and I had trouble stopping, I guess. But Mr. Yeah. Barton, Tom, is that uh, uh, they furnish your own insurance and all the wages and everything? Yeah. So we're just, just one lump sum. Yeah, and Jerry directs it. Yeah. Jerry Pangborn, <coughs> you know, we need, you know, identify the, the yeah. trees that need it. Uh, since it's it won't come up for another year, and there'll be questions about it. The, the, the criteria is within 10 feet of, the, of one of our power lines. So the, well, Matt will hear, and Nikki will answer 99% of these, probably 100% of the calls, but it will be, well, there's a dead tree across the street. Those are generally not, that, well, we'll go out and look at them. And if it's a monster that could fall, Maybe, but backyard trees next to a, what's called a secondary line. And if you have a secondary line, you know you know that. Uh, those are probably frequently, you know, requested rarely. Are they what this uh, contract's for? That's right. Who does um, like the the regular park tree trimming, and that is our our employees. Yeah. Like for a spring cleanup, whatever, yeah. and they do all that. If it's a monster, you might, if it's a monster tree, you might hire some help. Okay. Them, but typically we do that in early. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Every, almost everything you wanted to know about tree trimming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When are we planning on starting, like, to have these bids in and starting the work? I, I don't know. The, the, uh, this passes. We'll start preparing the bids, and I, they go, you have to have them in Thursday or Friday to get into the next paper. Maybe it's the Friday before. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have, it, we'll have it to them and hopefully in the paper. I don't know, Saturday or Wednesday of next week is it when that will appear. And I'm not going to get. I'm not going to sucker myself into getting into this whole issue of how we notify, and aren't there ways other than the twice weekly paper? But it's, it's something that someday, when we have an hour or two to talk about it, it's. It's. I'm not convinced that it gets to vendors like it could or should. That's probably not where the, our bidders will find out about it. They have other ways to find out. But in any case, we'll bid it middle of next month, probably. I would just wild guess, I would say June 1st-ish, the contract would be signed. 
uh, Jerry will have, I, I imagine he's got first week, second week, third week up in his mind or written down where he, where he needs him to be. Anyways. So the sooner the better. Mr. Richard. Yes, I, again, as Mayor indicated, the sooner the better. Uh, again, this is essentially something that we've done every year for the past several years. It's been very effective uh, to make sure that uh, we don't have some outages on some lines. Uh, also, there's the fact that if you have a line, and I didn't know this until years ago, is if there's a tree limb laying on a, a live line, there is, uh, I'm not using the right term, but it's basically uh, leakage. So we're losing power because it's a ground. And so that adds to the overall cost of the loss of power. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that this is something that we probably should go ahead and get through this council so they can go ahead and get the bids out so they can get the work started and such. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to suspend rules and send ordinance 2023-34 to the final reading. Motion to suspend rules by Mr. Richard, second by Ms. Bodkin. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Richard. Yes. Mr. Bodkin. Yes. Ms. Gerben. No. Ms. Frank. Yes. Mr. Watt. Yes. Ms. Eager. Yes. Motion did not carry. Right? Motion did oh, not you carry. Did not. So this will be held. Not carry. It did not carry. So does anybody have? How are we going to? They don't have to have a second meeting. Yeah, it's going to be a short. It's going to be a short meeting. That was it. If no, no further discussion. Well, I wanted to say one other thing. Yeah. Since we're celebrating the second reading here in two weeks, the one of the things we were concerned about is when you had that storm and you had that outage, that before the they were under the tree trimmers were under the line department. So boom, it was coordinated. I, the the guys have been really good at uh, helping each other out in that. So we have. I, Somebody could get data and show I wasn't quite accurate, but they're real good about showing up for OT and hitting the, the trees that are down that get in the way of the linemen doing the restoration work, if you will. So we were a little bit worried that, you know, they, they wouldn't show up, but they've worked uh, uh, exceptionally well in each, each department doing their part of the job. So anyway, thank you. Yep. Uh, the, the next ordinance is 2023-35. Ordinance number 2023-35. The ordinance vacating a portion of an unnamed, unimproved north-south alley between inlets 561 and 562, extending south from East Church Street, a distance of 66 feet more or less, being a 0 0.075 acres and reserving utility easements and declaring emergencies. Thank you. I can't remember if it, when it came through Mike's committee or not. That's what I was trying yeah. to Yeah, it came, it, but I'll jump in here real quick. Ken's. Ken's. I'm going to that, please. I am. Streets Alley Street over here. Yeah. Ken's. Oh, all right, Ken's. It's, it came to us yeah. through the land bank. And so in order to be able to utilize um, uh, state funding, federal funding that the state allocated to each county to tear down the old East School, it was uncovered that there was a platted alley. Uh, we own the alley both ends. It's never been developed though. And so this is really a formality to be able to uh, allow the uh, land bank to advertise the demolition of East Park. So. Um, it's a field right now, right? Huh? It's a field. Yeah, it's the back. Yeah, I don't even know what it was. It might have been the playground. Yeah. But it's it's um it's never been developed. And so anyway, it's it would it would be hard to be against the alley vacation and and like maybe the it's the East School Preservation Society. I didn't know it was they were active, but 
That's why we suspend the rules and move to the final reading. Okay. Motion made to suspend the rules by Mr. Watt. Second by Mr. Bodkin. Uh, roll, roll call, please. Mr. Watt. Aye. Mr. Bodkin. Yes. Ms. Durbin. Yes. Ms. Frank. Yes. Mr. Richard. Yes. Ms. Zeger. Yes. Motion carried. Suspend the rules. Ms. Zeger. I'd like to make a motion to pass Ordinance 2023-35. Motion to pass the ordinance by Ms. Seeger, second by Mr. Bodkins. <coughs> uh, any further discussion on this ordinance? Roll call, please. Ms. Seeger? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Watt? Yes. Motion, motion carried. Next ordinance is ordinance number 2023-36. Ordinance number 2023-36, entitled Ordinance for Authorizing the Safety Service Director to submit an application for grant funds under the Ohio Airport Grant Program and declare an emergency. Thank you. This, this one was voted on to the agenda tonight. I don't know the went to a committee, so Mr. Mayor. Uh, Nikki is the, our airport person. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I, I think it did go through committee. Yes. We just didn't oh, have a number of this yeah. application, so yeah. This is quite third or fourth year we've applied for this AWOS. I think it's only the third, third year. Yeah. Third time's a charm. Um, yeah, there you this go. This is, we're applying for a weather observation system through ODOT's grant program. Um, at the time we're trying it, I've been told they have a bigger pool of funds this year, so we're optimistic, again, that we might be awarded the money and be able to put the project in place. Um, this is on our capital improvement plan this is um, i think that's number two on the on the plan so this is something the pilots uh, have been hoping that we'd be awarded for a couple years now so the application is actually due next week we've been trying to juggle figure out what, what order we want to do the products in so there is a time sensitive nature to this um, i think the number that the engineer got me was three three hundred thirty two thousand five hundred dollars um, the local share would be 17500 wouldn't be built until next year, so it wouldn't budget into next year's um, budget. Thank you. Do we have any questions, Mr. Irvin? Okay, um, how many aircraft do we have a month flying in and out at this airport? Does anybody know? I don't know what the, the numbers are, but I can make those call. I don't know that we have a, a count, but I can get you, I can get you an estimate. Okay, I appreciate that. Also, um, this, is, this is for a weather observing system, an automated weather observing system, right? Yes. So pilots would know the conditions before they flew in to land. I'm, I'm trying to understand why we keep accepting these grants, and it's, I don't, nobody knows what's really going on out there. I mean, are there a lot, you know, a lot of planes? Do, will the pilots use this, you know? We have, most of the hangars are full, so we have a lot of local interest in, in that airport. Mm -hmm. um, I think we might have one hangar space open at this point. Miss Eager. I can offer a little bit of insight. Um, my nephew is a pilot, and he's a pilot instructor, and so, he has to gather so many hours a year and his um, trainees, I guess you would call them, that he trains, they also have to have so many hours a year. So him, um, when this, so he goes to OSU, or teaches at OSU. So when they're closed, he comes up here um, because this is his hometown. So he comes up here and he actually rents planes from the guy in the airport and has his trainees come up here and has them fly around up here so that they can get hours and it also helps them get hours. So I feel like it's very beneficial, especially for these newer people, these newer trainees, these newer kids that are learning how to fly, um, to have this information, you know, when we, they're gonna be heading up this way to fly up here to know what the weather's gonna be like, so. Ms. Frank. Um, well, I would like to say that it is called an automat automated weather observation observing system, which is meaning that is going to be um, more technically uh, advanced than anything that we have or that whatever. So, in terms of safety, and speaking of life safety, 
the um, helicopters come in and out of there for the hospital. They deserve to have the most updated weather observing system available. So I propose that we move forward with this because it not only benefits the people that use it privately, but it benefits uh, the people in our healthcare system. Is that a motion to system? I don't think that's on me. <laughs> Mr. Richard? Yes. Um, to piggyback on uh, Ms. Frank here is that um, I am a former pilot. Okay. One of the things that this system gives to the pilots is a real time weather. Most of the weather that is being broadcast <coughs> to pilots uh, comes from a NOTAM, uh, some weather uh, related items from where they take off at, they monitor. That is the initial. Those are also based off of uh, Mansfield Long's airfield weather conditions, as many of you have seen, excluding it being a pilot, is you can be on this side of Galleon and it's not doing a thing. You can be on this side of Galleon, you could be in a snowstorm, you could be in a rainstorm, a hailstorm, whatever. The benefit of this system, if we're able to get it, now again, like uh, Ms. Ward said, this is our third time trying is that it will give pilots real-time weather that they can actually call up on their radio while they're in the air so that way they have a greater uh, ability to uh, make decisions in real time where in the sense of landing uh, is the primary thing um, again like uh, Ms. Frank said we do have the uh, hospital running the uh, helicopter service out of that also. Uh, the other thing is I have to say is when I started in council probably 10 years ago, the airport was not as, as active as a <coughs> in the community as it is now. As Ms. Ward uh, indicated, the hangars are full. You can drive by there and see they are full. I've talked to pilots that fly in specifically to Galleon because they like it. It's not a big airport like Mansfield Long. It's a small airport. Uh, a lot of people come through this area to go to Oshkosh, which is a big private pilot's uh, jamboree, I'll call it that way. Uh, so many of the benefits that this would afford for a $17,000 investment, I think it is far out. Is a very good uh, thing. Well, I'm just I'm thinking that the, that the airport always has a minus every year. I mean, I've, I've never seen it change. And we just keep getting FAA equipment. Well, I understand what you're saying, but will it be utilized that much over a period of time? When you're talking about people's lives, does it really matter? I'm not talking about people's lives at this moment, okay? I'm talking about this is taxpayer money we're spending here. Seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. Well, I'm sorry, that's a lot. Just like the hundred for the last one. For the last one, I'm not talking about lives. I'm talking about we're spending taxpayer money. We have to be more prudent how we're spending our money because this airport does not seem to make any money. You just keep giving two experts that are that have experience. Well, if it comes out in the in a plus column this year, that's great. Well, the only thing I would add to the conversation is, ladies, is that uh, no, is the the is the airport much more closer to paying for itself, breaking even? I'd say yes. When you have a large contingent of pilots coming in and flying in specifically for fueling. Uh, for having the planes hangered here, that does benefit that, as opposed to what it was at one time, which didn't have a lot of this stuff to it. Uh, we have since, uh, since that time, we have added uh, ILS specialties at both ends of the runway. Uh, I think that, and again, uh, the other thing you have to understand is this is FDA, FAA, in many cases, a uh, requirement. That is part of a program that you, uh, since we own the airport, we have to be uh, mindful of. If we would take and 
I'm not sure. I don't know if you can even really uh, put this off too much longer in the sense of time frames because what happens is then the FAA will come step in and say, you will have to do this, period. And it's better to do it with a grant than to have to use it directly out of, out of some fund someplace. The, the, the other thing is, and I'll add to this, is the fact that um, there's always a consideration of liability for not taking and putting something in out at the airport. Somebody in a plane crash out there, there is always a chance. Now, whether this is weather, maybe nothing, could be something. And I mean, I, I understand your, and I agree. I mean, you always, we always are mindful of the money that we're, we're uh, talking about, no matter if it's, if it's not even a dollar, it's money, it's taxpayer money. But I think in this regard, uh, the benefits outweigh the um, the lack of any benefit, any benefits out of it. Poorly stated, but I mean that's pretty much. Thank you, Mr. Council. Anybody got anything else they'd like to add? Nikki, do we, you say we have, do have a time constraint on this? Yes, that's the application is due to first week of May. Mr. President, I'm, based on that, uh, I am going to suggest and I will make a motion to suspend the rules and move ordinance 2023-36 to the final reading. Motion by Mr. Richard, second by Ms. Frank. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Mr. Watt? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Mr. Bikins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Motion carried to suspend the rules. Ms. Frank? Um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, suspend the rules. No, no. no. Pass, pass ordinance number 2023-36. Motion well, passed by Ms. Frank, second by Mr. Watt. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Frank, yes. Mr. Watt, yes. Ms. Zeger, yes. Mr. Bodkins, yes. Ms. Durbin, yes. Mr. Richard, yes. Motion carried. Thank you. The, uh, the next ordinance on the agenda is number 2023 37. Ordinance number 2023-37, file ordinance amending ordinance number 2022-98, the permanent 2023 appropriations, by appropriating and transferring funds in various funds and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This came to finance. I realize a mayor to explain these. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best on this, Carl. The, uh, I'm going to need a little help in how right. section six and eight are set up. So I'm done looking over to the, since Julie put those together, maybe I can, I'll have a little help on that. Okay. The, um, uh, the first one is a supplemental in uh, Thomas's world. Um, maybe you can explain that. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we have had, uh, legal expenses this year that have, matched the amount that was provided by council in appropriation form in the legal services line item that I have. Uh, one of the reasons for that is, in fact, the primary reason for that is the various things going on with the uh, situation with the personnel issue that we dealt with, with the former police chief uh, and the subsequent uh, appeal, which has been filed uh, the attorney which you uh, were you authorized before earlier this year uh, is still at work. He's actually handling that for us, and so it is felt that looking forward, <coughs> this is the best estimate that uh, I can give you in terms of what I think the amount of money will be that will be needed for legal services between now and the end of the year. Uh, nothing is written in stone. I will say that. Uh, as I mentioned to the committee, the finance committee, that I have a, a very good track record. And in fact, I think it's 
unblemished in returning money to the city every year from unspent money in my legal services line. Mm -hmm. And I will in, endeavor and intend to do that again this year. Uh, but this year, unlike other years, uh, it's been such a situation that we are in need of additional funding. Any questions on that? I'll do, I'll do guess do your job here. <laughs> do we have okay. Any all right, the next one is 48,000 that you approved last meeting. Uh, it, it needs to be in a different uh, line item in the mayor's budget. It's not a contract service, it's a land and buildings issue. So that simply moves that previously approved money into the right, you can see the, uh, the uh, object code and line items there. So that's that. Next one is um, moving the our, our ARPA allocation into an area that it can be spent. So I think it's pretty straightforward. The language lets you know where it's going to capital outlay and land and improvements. For some reason, when it was appropriated, it ended up in materials and supplies. I don't know. And you all have to act on it because it's moved more than, it's moved out of its category. This is in no way a contract service. I'm sorry. Is this the money we got from the county? No. Okay. This is our allocation. We've not gotten the money from the county. No, but the way that will work is that we'll have, as individual projects are ready to be bid, we'll, uh, they'll actually be bid by the county and in, in a large sense, managed by the county. Okay. So, this is our this is our allegation. And the question is for. Okay. okay. This is putting money the one hundred and fifty in a position that it can be used in the Brant Road left hand turn. So that's what that one hundred and fifty is. <clears throat> six. Okay, and then six. I'm going to foul this up, but basically we have to move this the seventy five thousand requested by the port authority twice. I think is that fair to is that a good way to describe it or not? We only had seventy five thousand dollars appropriated in that transfer line item, so this is putting another seventy five thousand in that transfer line item for the. That makes 100% sense to me. I hope it. So there was, at the very end of the general fund, there's a whole list of transfers out of the general fund into a lot of different stuff, including the port. That had 75000 And so that needs to be increased if you want to, to uh, satisfy the request that they made. Of 150, they got 75. They what they really hoped they had, they would have received was 150. All right, that is that, and then nine oh, is the. Is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. We're giving them seventy-five thousand, which we've been giving them seventy-five thousand a year. No, I think it's more than that. I think it was. Uh, I think it was 150 last year. They've been. They've received. It's not right. Last two years of seventy five. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's saying yes. I feel like I think, huh? I think it was seventy five last. Yeah, okay. I, right. I can't speak for the year. Before. So what are they? What, what are they going to do with one hundred and fifty thousand? That the case that they made at the committee level was that that in order to maintain operations to be able to pay for everything they have budgeted, they need that other seventy five thousand. That's my understanding. Um, unfortunately, I don't see anybody from the Port Authority well, here tonight. Why aren't they here the money? Uh, why aren't they here defending it? I have. I just. I. I have a couple of questions directly to them for uh, to know what it is that they need the extra seventy five thousand for. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, if they had at least, uh, I'll just use last year. They operated with seventy-five thousand, so I'm assuming 
something's changed, mm -hmm. and I would like to know what the change is. That's right. Does this have anything to do with the projects, the buildings of the homes, or anything? Is it have so? Is it more administrative uh, costs, or yeah, I'm, 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 is I'm, there any uh, pay? Are me? they paid? Because I, I, I'm wondering too. Well, if you read section A, they want another, they want another seventy-five thousand. That's what. That's the gist of this legislation. Okay. It's three hundred thousand dollars. No, it's only going to be one hundred fifty total for them. One hundred fifty total. Yeah, yeah that's what it would be. Yeah. Yeah. seventy-five in the original appropriation. They had asked for one hundred fifty. That request came in after the budget has passed, it was really kind of on the final, it was in the finance committee on its on the road to being approved. So it got the budget got passed with the 75 that was put in ahead of their their, I guess, formal request. Can I ask, is this ordinance? Time sensitive, any of this that's on here? Yes. Uh, uh, if I could speak to you, Mr. President, just real quick. This problem. I'm only going to speak to one section, and it's not the section that deals with my request. It actually is section three. Uh, when you authorized that agreement, the last time we met, that agreement has been reduced to contractual form, and there is a time frame associated with that. Uh, so that is very much time sensitive. Okay, can I ask another question? Um, because nobody from the Port Authority is here to answer the questions that anyone has about this other 75000 that they are asking about, if this does not pass tonight, is there any way to amend this ordinance and pass the section that is time sensitive and then have the rest of it put on another ordinance? for a time that the Port Authority can come to answer those questions. Are there any other items that we would need to close out the month? But I would, this is, yeah. Just, Th this is what I would do, along those lines. I think what you're, you're trying to get, if you deleted the sections that affected the Port Authority and you were all right with the, with the other section, then yeah, you could proceed that way and come back. They're gonna run out of money. It's not quite like the national Debt, but they're going to run out of money. I think they said in October, so that's their. So there's time. That's their um, sort of cutoff. So yeah, I think there's time. They they may be at home screaming and frantically putting on a the Superman costume and flying up here. I don't. They know we have a meeting tonight. Yeah, I think to answer that, I think that uh, coming out of that last finance committee, I think that's when it was last discussed. There was not. There there was. That evening, there wasn't any uh, discouraging words or questions. So I was, since we're on the subject, I was upset the meeting before. They came to, to Missy's meeting on Tuesday and then weren't there Wednesday. But I think they they believed that they satisfied questions. Which, without getting too deep, I think they did. I think the people that were there that night, they satisfied their, satisfied their questions. Obviously, there's some tonight that didn't, you know. Right, but I mean, you could satisfy a committee, but I mean, obviously, that's something that's on a full council. Yeah, so. that's yeah. Learn by doing. This whole right. this whole um, exercise. They is, talked is that. about what the function of the port authority is yes. and the projects yes. is what they talked about. Um, my question is, do we have a budget from the port authority that we are, have access to? Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. That, the, the correct answer is yes. The correct answer is yes. There's a port. I think Mike asked because maybe budget. that would help people understand. Yeah, I agree with you, Miss. What? But the, an yeah. additional seventy. I don't be argumentative, but yeah, they submitted after I think Mike uh, asked to see the you know what they spent their money on their financials. So in that sense, that gave you an idea. Of the budget. And, and I agree with Carrie about removing sections that we're you know. Don't feel like we have enough information to make a decision about, and then I'm voting on the ones that are uh, that, that have a time frame. Yes, Rich. 
Yes, and I was going to suggest that <coughs> section six, seven, and eight are all related to the Port Authority. Yeah. So my suggestion would be to take and remove those three second sections and to amend this ordinance and then uh, go ahead and uh, move forward with the rest of the ordinance and this can come back to council committee whatever let's let's go over section nine and then i was going to say motions. section eight is telling us what they need it for community projects transportation street but improvement capital. that's just their that's their general yeah. that's yeah. not really yeah. they, they they need to be here to tell us what but it's not in number seven or six okay we just we just can't hand over time i don't know i agree yeah, so so let's Six, let's review section nine and then if you guys decide to, to make an amendment then you can make that motion. Section nine is uh is hundred and seventy thousand. Yeah, the, the, section nine is the other not quite half of what's needed to be able to uh, authorize the um, the next ordinance, the mall Lightman architecture contract. I know Kara had asked, for, you know, if the rest of the money, because there's 110 of freeze dollars. But by the way, we got the check today. That's sort of like, what is that, Christmas in April or something. So Grant Garvey was in with, in with the check, which has been an issue. That's sort of saying that in a happy mood. We had waited the year that we built the uh, playground in the park. There were a couple of former council members until that money was in there that they wouldn't authorize the bidding. and without bringing up sour grapes or something. The, we lost our line in the production, lost several months and ended up opening it up in November. But anyways, back to the subject. This is uh, the 170 and the 110 of freeze dollars will put us within about 12 or 13,000 of the, of the uh, lump sum estimate for the contract that follows. Thank you. That's what this is. <laughs> Matt's got some stuff for people who are interested in the facts and figures. They would show you that, uh, and maybe he'll pass it around. It's a, it's a list of the investments that the city and outside entities have made since, gosh, I want to say it precedes 03 and 04. So there was a lot of money spent right before the crash. So it wasn't just Pico Park. But uh, anyways, the... Uh, so he made me pass that out for the people who, who might be interested. I guess the point, what you'll see at the bottom line is the city has put in a million, 400,000, and there's a, oh, gee, about a third of that amount that's come from outside grants. Uh, Tom, yeah. you might want to emphasize to yeah. that this is for the depot. Yeah. And what this is well, I guess that was. For the depot. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. My, my, my I was going to ask that. Yeah, so it's the architecture for that. Those are the various inve okay. investments made by the city and outside entities. So I'm, I'm well aware that this is a, a, uh, a large chunk. Um, I'd say people can disagree that we've done all of the relatively inexpensive stuff. One of the things that, that, that I was thinking about tonight earlier and getting ready for this conversation is that we've really not spent much money the last couple of years. We've, we've not had, we've sort of tapered back. Now the, the advocates for the, for the depot there, I think you know them on a first name basis if you didn't before. They're, they represent a small group of people who really would like to see that done. And I think their, I think their biggest frustration is, is it ever going to get done? And uh, so, anyways, the we've done all the little stuff, and so the the large expenses. When you you think back to the budget that was passed out of the previous meeting, there's a lot of electrical, mechanical, HVAC that is kind of one big lift. And we've nibbled around avoiding that stuff, but now if you're gonna do the interior of the building, that that becomes a cost that is I understand is difficult to divide and just do the first floor until we have the money for the second floor, because that would be kind of an original uh, you know, that might be something as you start to look at it that you would wonder that. But anyway, 
Are you talk are you talking about doing the depot in, in phases? No. No. Okay. Only if it, only if all of our outside money is ends up being fairy dust. And then I you know, I honestly I'm Matt and I've been working a lot. We're kind of on the third iteration. Plan C. What you see is plan A, plan B is a little requires uh, probably some borrowing. So I don't like plan B real well and we're starting to think of plan C and that's that's if those assumed amounts coming from um, state sources don't don't end up being you know. Okay, you mentioned that, yeah. that we got a hundred thousand from Ohio development. You were asking for six hundred thousand. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. so that's from the Ohio that, Capital Bill. That yeah. hundred thousand is part of this. Yeah, that's in the <clears throat> excuse me, it's in the sources that we've already booked as. And I think I think to avoid borrowing money, we're hoping to get three hundred thousand out of the next capital bill. And what? and 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 our plan is to use that on stuff that we would see being constructed in after July 1st of 24, because that's when the new fiscal year, state fiscal year, the money would be available. So think of the um, uh, uh, construction of the parking lot, any exterior improvements that aren't there, that's what, the kind of things that we use the capital bill for. Three hundred thousand. Okay, so the ultimate goal is to yep. finish the depot, and you're going to to rent spaces. Is that the to, so we might get some money? Yeah. So the two the that's a good question. The two primary rent drivers. I think there'll be a third one, but that is a little bit blue sky. But I'll go through them. The the two primary ones would be monthly rent from SCAD, right. and uh, the second one would be monthly rent from uh, tenants, office sharers. I don't. I don't think we know exactly what that mix of tenants would be. If they would be a lot of people coming in there in the evening and and moving their cottage business into something other than the living room or the kitchen. Uh, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to attract. Uh, social service agencies, which are, there's a big imbalance in terms of access to service uh, between Galleon and Bucyrus. And so if we can get a few uh, rent days there, uh, I think what we'll find is that there are, uh, <clears throat> are in the medical field, uh, entities that can come up, uh, the folks that help put together the uh, health fair you could also just so, anyways, yeah. an elevator for the ABA. Yep, 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 yep. And that that I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's a reality. I would sorry to say it spiked the cost, but I don't know. We were probably we were more in the wishful stage and we're getting to the point where we're deciding what we're gonna build, so it's you can't and uh, so anyways. I would just like to say in review and looking at this, and this is being has been worked on for twenty three years. <laughs> Second, so, on? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> um, I suppose. Yeah. My feeling is of I'm very much in favor of um, the renovation of the depot. Um, I think it would be you know very much an asset of our community in terms of economic development, provide opportunities for some service-oriented businesses to be in there, as well as tourist attractions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that uh, they've already spent 20-something years. I want to say <laughs> that I think that we can, um, we should help, we should pass this and help them with this funding so we can get this project going and completed. Timers are hoping we get it done before before well, we kick out. But it is. I mean, it's been a it's been a really long time. So I, I'm why I'm, yeah. Let's let's move forward. These guys have worked so hard yeah. on this and living here and close to the depot and well, going up there. It's, the excuse was for 14 years we're in fiscal emergency. Keep that in mind. That was. There's no question about it. Okay. Yeah. This is the this is the good thing. 
But it's not going to happen overnight. I think, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to take. It's going to take a lot of money here. Yeah, I think the 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 question I thought I'd be. I'm all ready to ask uh, or answer, but wasn't asked. Is where that uh, 1.2 million local money? If you look at that that spreadsheet, and I think there's. Uh, I can uh, detail that out. I did talk about the 300 of the capital bill future. The, what I would the 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 largest amount of that is we have about 900,000 now in the capital in the permanent improvement fund. Yes. That, yeah. So that's the that's that big white elephant the the HTI building. So they gave us so we've got all of that money. So we have about 900,000 commitment for some roadway projects. Uh, I think we just talked about. And uh, and so I'm really penciling in 600,000 of that. So it is a big, that that enables us, I, th I with any kind of luck with the state or we earn that money, then we'll, that'll avoid borrowing. I think that's real important. To avoid having a long-term debt, I, I'm sorry. Kim. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to make a motion before we pass anything to amend this ordinance and remove section six through eight. All right, motion to amend this ordinance, removing section six, seven, and eight by Ms. Zeger, second by Ms. Frank. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Zeger, yes. Ms. Frank, yes. Mr. Richard, yes. Mr. Watt, yes. Mr. Bodkins, yes. Mr. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, before we get too crazy about the depot, that's a, that's a good move. But the, the, another thing I wanted to say about that is that sometimes, it seems to me, that you spend a lot of taxpayers' money and you regret it a little bit. And maybe you all haven't had that experience. I'm just trying to be honest enough. I think what we'll find with this, when it's done, and whether you're driving by it for two years or 40 years or, or whatever, you'll drive by that and say, yeah, that's probably pretty good. Because uh, the people who've been at it for 20 years remember what a hellhole it had been left when the freeze dollars were first committed to acquire it. It was a joke. Yeah. So anyways, so I think it's a good thing. I don't, I don't think anybody will, will regret being associated with it. it the, the very last thing I want to say about it is that real mindful, I don't, Matt and I don't have this worked out entirely, but we've got to come up out of the cash flow. That's where if we can eliminate debt's real important because well, how are you going to pay the debt? Well, with the revenue coming off it, but it's real important to accumulate a capital reserve fund. Uh, and, and so that when the roof, which is, getting old now has a major blowout or something happens we aren't not necessarily us but the next counselor five seven years in the future it's like wow these guys they thought they were so smart <laughs> now we've got buckets everywhere and and uh, nowhere to no reason or excuse me no way to repair it so we're going to work hard between now and when the uh, the rest of the bidding comes forward to uh Come up with a way to fund a capital reserve fund because that's that. You know, this is it's important on a new building, but an old renovated building, I think, uh, it, it just seems to me to be a good idea. Save headaches. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Mr. Bonds, I'd like to thank these people from the temple. Uh, there have been so many projects that people come up here to council and ask for something. You're the only one that ever showed up. Thank you for every group yourselves. And I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things for process, and nothing's ever said. But you guys show up. I think it's a worthwhile project. Just go sit there and fall down eventually if you want to do something with it. But I believe there's a lot of things to be done with it. And I appreciate you being here. Uh, you work hard at this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Richard. Yes. Um, unless there's any other uh, discussion, I'd like to make a motion to move the amended ordinance 2023-37 on to the final reading. I'll make a motion to move to the final reading. Suspend the rules by Mr. Richard, second by Mr. Watt. 
Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Watt? Yes. Ms. Eager? Yes. Mr. Bodkin? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Motion carried. Suspend the rules. Ms. Frank? I would like to make a motion to pass or leave. Uh, Relationships been, I think, been pretty positive. They're the uh, the the increase in cost that people have been following this in their mind or and seeing the prices really has to do with what Miss Durbin was pointing out when she mentioned that the elevators included the extra engineering and some architectural piece. You can see right where that contributed uh, to the increase in this final cost. I, the passing this uh, tonight or as soon as possible, we would, if it passes tonight, we would likely authorize the contract uh, tomorrow and board of control and they would start designing the, the, fine, the plans. The, the, the biggest, um, oh, I want to say time frame that we need to meet is to meet ODOT's and SCAT's commitment to spend the money on that first floor. So what will happen first, kind of contrary to typical, is they won't start on the second floor. They'll start and finish out, and so there'll be construction above the our new tenants, but that's that's kind of how how it's going to have to be. So, um, so anyways, I don't really have anything else to add. So right. We're happy with them, and... Uh, <clears throat> we hope we finish up the project smiling and shaking hands and feeling like it was worth all the, the time. Thank you, Ms. Ray. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say that, I mean, I think that this is just part of, you know, uh, the, the renovation of the depot, and it says right here that it's going to be paid from the depot funds, so I'm not really sure why we wouldn't um, want to move forward with this tonight. And this one we need a repo fund that's about one hundred and seventy thousand. Okay. Okay. So we got one hundred and seventy thousand in the depot fund, and the architect's bill was two hundred and ninety-three thousand. Where's the extra money going to? Well, like I had said before, um, the uh, Grant Garvey brought the check that has the other one hundred and ten thousand, and then the twelve or thirteen will be the. Um, the uh, sinking fund, the mayor's contract services budget for the 48,000 came from. So that'll get us covered. It's kind of patched together, but uh, I think by the, the time the contract's signed, the, the money will be put in place in the depot fund and we'll be in terms of cash flow and should be all right. We will be all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any other questions? Mr. Watt, I move to suspend the rules and move to the final reading. All right, motion to suspend the rule by Mr. Watt, second by Mr. Bodkins. Roll call, please. Mr. Watt. Yes. Mr. Bodkins. Yes. Ms. Gerber. Yes. Ms. Frank. Yes. Mr. Richard. Yes. Ms. Eager. Yes. Motion carried to suspend the rules on 23-78. 
I can never tell if you have your hand up. Is that pen in the air? Have you got your hand up? Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all night, this prank has been like this. So. <laughs> You're really well. <laughs> Mr. Richard, or unless Miss Frank had her hand up. <laughs> I, I'd like to make a motion to pass ordinance number 2023 38. Motion passed by Ms. Frank, seconded by Mr. Hopkins. Do we have any further discussion on this ordinance? Roll call, please. Ms. Frank? Yes. Mr. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Watt? Yes. Ms. Eager? Yes. All right, motion carried. Thank goodness we have some comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on uh, resolution 2023-6, please. Yes. Resolution number 2023-6, entitled Resolution Authorizing the Safety Service Director to Contract for the Disposal of Unneeded Personal Property Owned by the City of Dallas and Declared Emergency. Thank you. <coughs> This is, we're trading on this. This is the first race. This is, we're trading in cars. Oh, okay. Okay. This okay. isn't the internet option. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is different. Okay. Sounds similar. This, this work, do you want to review this one for us? Well, I was just going to say, this is a big project anyhow. It's probably should just go around and get this run tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is, we're trading in two very old, non-running PD cars on two new-to-us undercover vehicles for them. All right, thank you. Thank you. If no one else has any uh, comments, uh, I'd like to make a motion to Suspend the rules and move resolution number 2023 6 to the final reading. Motion to suspend the rules by Ms. Frank, seconded by Mr. Bodkins. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Frank? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Watt? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Motion to suspend the rules, Gary. Mr. Richard? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to pass resolution 2023 6. Right, motion to pass the resolution 23-6 by Mr. Richard, second by Mr. Watt. Uh, any further discussion on this resolution? Roll call, please. Mr. Richard. Yes. Mr. Watt. Yes. Ms. Zeger. Yes. Mr. Botkin. Yes. Ms. Durbin. Yes. Ms. Frank. Yes. <clears throat> the motion carries. The next bit of business is um, other business. So, if we have the, um, the calendar for May, somebody, anybody would like to go first? I oh, will. This reads on the 11th to 6.30. 11th to 6.30. All right, thank you. Is he here? Um, yeah, please fire in health is on the 18th at 7. 18th at 7. All right, thank you. And Mr. Watt? Finance on the 17th. 17th at 7. Right. Thank you. Mr. Irvin. The Parks Committee on the Parks Recreation will meet on the 10th of May at 7 p.m. here. Okay, thank you. And I have one more thing. Sure. I'm asking the mayor to submit his resignation for the fourth time. Thank you. For the health and safety of the citizens of the alley. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Uh, long ordinance will be on May 2nd at 7 o'clock here. May 2nd, 7 o'clock, thank you. And, and I will, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Ms. Salt is uh, in charge of um, the economic, oh, oh, Ms. Frank, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, economic Development Committee will be on Tuesday the 16th. There's five Tuesdays, so, you know, that confuses me. <laughs> Tuesday the 16th, Julie? Yes. Okay. Sorry, Tuesday the 16th. Uh, Mr. President, uh, for uh, we have utilities. We have right, well. and that's Ms. Holmes, uh, right. Chair, uh, as a member of that committee, I'm sure uh, it will be on May 3rd, which is a Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Ms. Frank? 
I was going to ask Carrie what the date of the airport, if I didn't write it down, I'm sorry. Oh, you mean police fire and health? Police fire and health, yeah. That is on May, May, yeah, May 18th. All right, very good, thank you. Do we have anything else? All right, Mr. Satterfield. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I presented to you the, uh, the monthly reports, or the uh, meeting reports. The first page is your revenue report at 2.5 million uh, to date. And I will say that, yes, the check came today is not shown on this because that will be posted tomorrow for today. So if you look in the, on the cash, say the cash position under 405, so the pretty fun, it doesn't show that there's any revenue, but that will change tomorrow on the report. Um, thank you. Expenses are 1.23. We're right around 30%, 31% on the revenues. We're 37% on the expenses year to date. Um, and the statement of cash position um, report there. We are hopeful that uh, the reconciliation will be will be done uh, fairly soon. We're waiting on and putting a couple of things into the system. Uh, the target is, is pretty good. You know, we've got information to Ms. Porter so that she can review it. Um, also working on uh, going over the, the budget and the line items and, and seeing where there's some some potential issues and I hope to have that information uh, to Ms. Ward and the mayor so that we can get to the finance and some of those small things taken care of or some of the big things there's a, there's a few issues that we need to get fixed and we'll get that presented in a very timely fashion. Any questions? Yes sir. Um, go ahead. We're still spending more than we're making uh, that's, that's a great question. I would say that the simple answer is yes, because you budgeted more than you were really getting. So, so it, should, it should catch up as the year progresses, hopefully. I know you're well, not a forecaster, but... I will go back to, I mean, I, the expenditures in the budget and the overall budget are more than the expected revenues that were coming in. I, I think that's, that's a... If you look at actually what's going to come in, that did not that doesn't take into account the carryover that we had. So, um, I mean, month to date, I mean, we've expensed at 1.2 million and we brought in 2.5, so we've actually doubled our revenues for for April, and that's with another 400 thousand on the on the books tomorrow. So, anyone else? Ms. Palmer. Uh, Ms. Ms. Porter, Porter was here. Oh, I'm sorry. I, so, in fact, Ms. Porter. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. Do you have anything? I have nothing. So nothing. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. You're fine. Mr. Palmer. Yeah, just really quickly, uh, three words of thanks. Always believe in giving thanks when it's due. Thank you for passing the Legal Services Fund. That's a necessary expense. Thank you for passing the 48,000 in the way that you did. That ties something up that needed to be tied up. And thank you so much for, you know, I, I'm very careful not to urge you things while you're considering them. But uh, as someone who's worked in downtown revitalization for the last 30 years in Guyan, thrilled about what you did with the depot, solidly supportive of it, and thank you very much. Hey, Mr. Paul. Yep. Hey. Um, Gosh, I don't know where to start. Uh, Five ninety eight will start up pretty soon. They have to be at a sustained temperature, I believe, above forty to put down the surface course. So we're going to see it start a little bit sooner. There is a uh, meeting, a conference called a uh, step two hearing on. Uh, some claims filed by the contractor on that. I believe that's the 21st or 22nd of the month. Um, and so we're employing a couple, you know, a handful of uh, resources to try to limit our 
our exposure to that. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, the other stuff I kind of uh, let out of the bag as we as we went along. The freeze dollars. So uh, next uh, parks committee meeting, uh, we'll have a couple <clears throat> or maybe three of those projects ready for bidding, so that the the, um, <coughs> the discussion um, about bidding the parking lot is going to come up. So I think what we intend to do is uh, bundle or put together the pickleball court and the parking lot into one sale. Try to get uh, contractors to look at not just two little projects, but a couple of little projects or a couple of medium-sized projects. Well, so that, that, that one will be coming forward. Will that include the daycare? Section also? No, they're taking care of that on their own. Okay. They're, they're, um, and at once upon a time, the pickleball was going to be a Y project, but I think that has shifted over and it's going to be more, more of a city project. Um, so that's, <coughs> that's that. Uh, we either made the calls today or we'll be sending to the two most likely suspects when it comes to paving that we expect to be below the $50,000 bid level. So the uh, Amix Drive, or I don't know, I'll have to name after someone, something. But anyways, from 61 uh, back to the, to the what uh, Josh uh, Keeler calls the dam and I call the bridge. So Josh is the guy that runs the water plant. So he sees it as a dam, but up to that point, probably no further and given the sort of an overall look at the water fund we're I doubt if we do the dam the, the, the road part of the dam um, so those are gosh it seems like three or four freeze projects and all the asphalt stuff we aren't going to bid our own streets but we're going to bid every other piece of uh, asphalt where we have money uh, that's that a bunch of stuff will happen at utilities that I'll talk with uh, Kara about, but, but there's a need to move a few projects along and update you on, on, on how things are going. I, I don't know. Any hotel update? Oh, you know, thank you. Yes. The, um, the uh, transition of the actual management of the hotel is upon us. I know that's why Jack Harps is here. He's concerned about that. We'll have a a manager. Uh, our hope, our expectation is that there'll be a HUD certified manager, and you know, we'll let you know by Thursday. I know that doesn't uh, the rents due on Thursday, is it at four o'clock? Rents due on the first. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so that, that is going to transition, and, and, and we think we'll have somebody in place that, is, uh, that will take over that, uh, the, duty at least, the duties at least on an interim basis. So thanks for reminding me. Mr. Rogers. Yes. I have a few calls from concerned citizens about some uh, problems we've had, and I've had to use Mr. Palmer, Nicole Ward, and Matt Heckleberry, and they've been very fine and fast. Handle me in a couple, three days of calling me back, and I do appreciate that. Thank you. Ms. Ray? Oh, I was asking about um, the HUD certified manager. Who is the person here from? Uh, I just live there. Pardon me? I live there. Oh, you live there. Okay. They, they call me the doorman. I, I was just going to say. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't do it. I'm HUD certified, and, but I know somebody that is that may be interested, unless they already have somebody. No, I think any, the, the, right over there, the talkative one, Ms. Ward, is who you should channel those, uh, those names, those referrals to. We have some leads. We're going to talk to some oh, people, okay. but we're not, but we're not, uh, we don't even know if the people are dying to have the job or, uh, but they haven't avoided us. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. 
In the, end, the current manager, of course, Thursday is her last day. Mm -hmm. uh, she told me it is not HUD certified. She is not, or it is not? It is not. It's not a HUD house. That's, that's what it? our current manager told me. Okay. I, I talked to Debbie, too. If she is not HUD certified, but the fair housing, she is certified by Ohio Fair Housing. Now, the other manager that was there was HUD certified. Mm -hmm. But Debbie is not, but she comes under Ohio Fair Housing. They're the ones that implement, it, implement HUD's mm -hmm. rules in the state of Ohio. And they come in for inspections a couple times a year. Okay, well, our building is HUD certified as well. So we have the REAC inspection once a year. Um, so I, there's different entities of there's, there's a lot of different and yeah. so I just I'll call Nikki and if I can help you I know somebody that might be interested as, as an intern so I could have said that like a parrot Matt mocking a parrot I have no idea what HUD certification is but <laughs> it's, so there you go it's Paul it's very lengthy yeah. it's, pardon me it's what it, you're going through the, pretty much the FBI to get. Oh, well, it's, it's very intense. Do you have anything they to be doing? <laughs> Not that I can say. All right. But the building itself is kind of like well. Right. Well, Ms. Egan? I would like to make a motion to go into an executive session to consider the appointments. Um, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, compensation of a public employee, or the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee official, licensee, or regulated individual. Uh, Mr. President, you need either Ms. Ward or myself in there, I believe. Yes, it's yes, necessary to hand both of them. You need a second first. Yeah. Could you, could you I second? That motion was made by Ms. Ms. Eager and second by Mr. Richard. Before you said that, could I just say, say a couple words? Sure. I, I, yeah. I want to thank the council for your actions tonight and what you're doing for the city and everything. It has been a long process at that train station but and it's been pretty dark at times but i feel like the lights turned back on so uh you know our whole goal is to make that a showcase for galleon and, and what you've done is uh, get us back on that in that direction so thank you very much appreciate it we appreciate your guys' yes. perseverance for sticking with it for as long as you guys have stuck with it yeah, it's, it's been difficult at some times, but it's been fun too. So, uh, thank you. Work very, very hard. Yeah, we appreciate it. You need to have a vote. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I'd like to roll call, please. Uh, Ms. Teacher? Yes. Did you get some Mr. Mr. Richard? Yes. Can you show me yes. Ms. Watt? Uh, Mr. Yes. Watt? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Motion carried. Yes. Eight twenty-three. We'll move into executive session. If I can ask, uh, ask everyone to leave, except uh, um, Mr. Palmer, if you like, if you could say please. Yes, yeah. Ms. Ward, I think you should add, add to the, add to the conversation. I appreciate it.